I am here with Dr. Thomas Lodi, MD, and he is going to share with us some of the work that he has done in alternative healing for cancer patients and other people. So first, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey that brought you to the holistic medical field. Okay. Um, actually, before I ever went to medical school, my journey was spiritual. I lived in India for a while as a young man at the age of 19, came back to America, went to uh, <clears throat> graduate school in psychology, became a psychologist, and then realized I didn't know enough about um, biochemistry and pharmacology, so I went to medical school. So my journey was spirit, mind, body. So, and, um, so, but so, and when, so uh, clearly when I got into practice, that all, got, I, ha I had to incorporate that. So, okay, so th you went through medical school and then you became a homeopathic physician. Um, after that, is that how that happened? Right, when you graduate from medical school, you have an MD, which makes you an allopathic physician. Right, which allopathic physicians basically prescribe surgery, drugs, and radiation. Right, and they don't really look for much else. Mm -hmm. They look for a diagnosis which has a certain protocol of things to do to people. Um, <clears throat> what what has been forgotten is that the word doctor in Latin really means to teach. And in Japan, and in Japan, they call doctor sensei, which means teacher. And that's really what doctors need to do is to teach, okay, and inspire. But um, uh, well, I practiced allopathic medicine for about 10 years and just found that no one was really getting any better. They were just get, accumulating more drugs and all that stuff. So when I left, uh, I left that practice and I went around the world searching. One of the, one of the um, um, modalities or one of the uh, areas of medicine that was attractive to me was homeopathy. Because homeopathy is basically simply understood is that a lot of something causes a symptom. A teeny bit of it causes the body to resist that symptom. So, for example, if you take an onion and you start peeling an onion, you're going to have tears. If you take a drop of that onion juice, put it in some in a liquid, a clear liquid water, hit it against your palm ten times. That's called one X. You take a take an, a drop out of that out and put it in another one ten times, two X. Okay, by the time you get to 23 X, there's no onion that took to be found by any scientific evaluation. And yet, you can put a few drops under your tongue, peel an onion, and you won't cry. That's how homeopathy works. So the, a little bit, okay. So I, inc I incorporate homeopathy and I incorporate allopathy, you know, um, when necessary, we've got a stage four cancer, we've got to shrink those tumors quickly because someone's dying. Uh, we'll use insulin to cover the, because cancer needs insulin and sugar. So we give the insulin, it opens the door, and the cancer's saying, feed me, and we take 10% of the normal chemo, and it goes right in there. And so we're targeting it. We can shrink tumors. We can do that a couple times a week and, and get someone who, like, if they're having obstruction, they can't have bowel movements, they can't eat, whatever, they can't breathe. This, those symptoms go away rather quickly. So once you get them stabilized, then you kind of switch over to the uh, naturopathic. And what does that entail? That entails high doses of intravenous ascorbic acid, ozone. We use gene therapy. We use a variety of different therapies that are non-toxic from the person's body or uh, so, a high dose of ascorbic acid, as you probably all know, is vitamin C. Sure. And we now know how that works. And I won't go into the details now, but we now know that it selectively kills cancer cells, which is really cool. Uh, but, uh, the, but the most fundamental thing we do is we teach people how to stop making cancer. Because it doesn't matter how good you are at getting rid of it, if you're still making it, it's going to be back. Okay? If you don't clean the water in the aquarium, it doesn't matter what you put in there, the fish will continue to get sick. And that's what we do. That's the most fundamental thing. And in fact, if someone does only that, they don't even need to do the other things. And I've had people who were inspired enough and psycho-spiritually said, thank you. Because you can't walk this path as a victim. Oh, I got to drink this green juice. Oh, I got to eat, you know. If you're doing that, it's not going to work. You've got to realize that you've been blessed. You know, and we look at these diseases as a tap on the shoulder by the universe telling you, well, maybe make a right here. You know, this, <laughs> this isn't working anymore. Right, this path is a little shorter than you'd like. <laughs> so go down there. And that's what we do. So, th so the three aspects of treating cancer. Teach the person to stop making it. Selectively target and kill it without killing the person. Good idea. And then number three, enhance the immune system. Because there is a cure for cancer. It's called a healthy immune system. So that's what we do is all three of those. So the how to stop making it, what does that entail? That entails um, um, cleansing the body, okay, because the, uh, only a toxic, acidic system with lots of free radicals and 
junk in there will produce cancer. So you change the biochemistry of your body and you do that by cleansing it out, getting colonics, eating live green foods, you know, just cleansing the body out, getting lymphatic massage, doing exercise, doing yoga, doing other, other ways of, um, of, um, of enhancing, uh, uh, enhancing um, uh, the basically the immune system. Basically, it's reconnecting with nature. Because we've lost our way. You know, we live in boxes and we drive around in machines. We communicate with machines. And, you know, we even go to the country because we want to get close to nature, forgetting that this is nature. Yes. So we're already in it. Okay, but we don't, we don't understand that so we don't treat ourselves with the respect we would nature. But we are nature. And when we understand what, what our bodies require for optimal functioning, because health must be defined as the optimal functioning of the organism. Right? Yes. What is that for humans? No clue. Einstein used 7% of his brain. You know, there are guys in Machu Picchu who are fathering children at the age of 110. We don't know what optimal, we know what optimal functioning is for a bear and a goldfish, but not for humans. So, uh, anyway, so that, if you reconnect to nature, get clean, you'll stop making cancer. Then I can come along and do a few little things as short as possible and as non-toxic as possible mm -hmm. to get rid of any really major burden and you'll heal. And we've get, and of course we get people in late stage cancer and they go on to leading happy lives. And what kind of uh, diet do you, do you shift their diet according to their individual needs? Do you recommend it in the beginning?